Yes, today we are talking about my favorite topic. Me. Tara. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not my favorite topic. But yeah, today I want to talk about my healing journey. I went through my healing journey in 2018. That's about six years ago. Yeah. And I want to tell you more about my healing journey. But the reason I want to share about that journey and my healing up to the point of even becoming a coach and helping other women heal is I want to share the things I learned that I did not, nobody told me, not my coaches, not the books I was reading, not my therapist, the things that no one told me, but I had to learn in my journey. And I really, I love you so much. And I want you to know these things. Like I would have given anything to know these things. You know, those things you di discover through hardships and through going through a lot. Yeah. The lessons you learn through hardships. It's what I want to talk about as I also talk more about what happened why did i have to go through my healing journey what inspired me to do coaching blah 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 so in that during that period 2017 2018 uh, my parents were relocated to the states uh, I, I was at a period where i also did not like my job very much um it was it got to a point where i felt like it was not a healthy environment and I felt like I needed change. You know how you get to a point you feel like, um, like you guys were asking me questions. Please, if you have not watched the Q and A on Wednesday, please watch it. Where you were asking me, someone asked me, "Oh, Madani, can you quit a job that's comfortable?" Yes, you can, so long as you feel like you want, like you don't want to work there anymore. So long as you come up with a plan before quitting. I was one of those where I have a comfortable job. It's a well-paying job. You know, I'm already out here. People already know me. It's what I went to school for, but I was so unfulfilled. So during that period of my identity crisis, my parents are relocating. I went through a breakup. So what triggered me to start my healing journey, to go for coaching, for therapy, to start reading books? What triggered me is the breakup. Little did I know the breakup was just the, um, the trigger, like I've said, was just the, um, the topping. But there were a lot I needed to heal from. So when I went through my healing, when I started my, my pro the healing process, the process was to heal the breakup wound. Like I really, I remember the first time I met my, I started going for therapy and then I started coaching. Because therapy, I realized therapy helps you with your past, who, uh, things you're trying to heal from. But coaching helps you move forward. It gives you the tips and techniques to help you cope and moving forward how to deal with the issues at hand i don't know what's wrong with one of my lashes it's sticking somewhere down now so uh the breakup was a tip but i had a lot of things i had to heal from so when i started therapy i remember when the first time i met my therapist i was crying i met her at a function at an event and then she started talking about healing and all those things and i remember i started talking to her and i just couldn't I was just crying. She sat me down on a chair. She gave me her card and said I should reach out. So when I, when I went for that, for my first therapy session, you know how you're dating someone? I dated a narcissist. I've done videos about it. You can watch the videos here. You know how you're in a relationship where the other person has made you believe you are the problem. You, they, you are the problem. You, you are the reason the relationship did not work. And then he had a lot of complaints about me. So I went for therapy because I cannot make a relationship work. And those are some of the things I've spoken in my book. Especially my preface is about that. I went for therapy. Uh, uh, I went for therapy because I felt like I was not a good person. Like there's something wrong with me, you know. And then also to top it off, the guy had made it clear. By the way, you are the problem. You, I'm a good man. You'll never find a man like me. That time I did not know he was a narcissist. I found out he was a narcissist when I was in therapy. Now, to top it off, now this my my boyfriend, my current boyfriend was doing that. And then all along my life, I had also gone through bullying. Also, you know, as, as we African, and these are things I talk about, how in an African home, you're not allowed to talk back to your parents. Not even to talk back, to reason with them. I didn't know how. I, I, I And then also, if you have African parents, most of them, mostly they point out your mistakes. Rarely will they tell you, I love you. I'm proud of you. You're beautiful. You will make it. It's just when you continue with this behavior, you will never go anywhere. There's, you have a problem. You are indisciplined. You are, you know, so so i had a lot i had a lot of um, um negative self-talk i didn't believe in myself 
So when I came, I came to heal the breakup. And then when we started talking about the breakup, I realized there were other issues, especially issues that stemmed from my childhood. Now we started going through my childhood. And I remember the first time she asked me, how was your childhood? I couldn't find anything positive. I was so surprised. I couldn't find anything good to say. I was just like, it was okay. And then she was like, what is okay? And then when I started talking, then she was like, how was your relationship with your father? Oh my God. When she asked me my relationship with my dad, I just broke down. I cried so much. And that was the beginning of my healing journey, healing my inner child. And that's when I, when I learned that the inner person is the person who enjoys life. We have, everyone has a little child in them. The little Mudoni, the girl who grew up to be this beautiful tall woman you see here, um, that is the person. If that pass, that is the person who enjoys life. The young little girl, the little Mudoni in me. So if that person, child was traumatized, went through abuse, went through um, abandonment, went through whatever she went through, and she never healed, she grows up with those issues. So I still had those issues. So when I was in therapy, I discovered I dated a narcissist, and one of the reasons why I dated a narcissist is because I had low self-esteem. Like I allowed that man to gaslight me, to brainwash me, to lie to me, to belittle me, to strip me of the little esteem I had built. <laughs> yes. So some of the things I learned during that journey, the most important thing, even as you go through healing, and this is one of the things I teach my clients. No, let me go back, Kidogo. Now, when I went for coaching for therapy, I realized a lot of the things I learned through my that time are not things we a lot of women know i've actually met a lot of women now afterward after becoming a coach who tell me they re, they discovered healing the inner child with me they didn't know what the trauma was why they were going through the issues they were going through now after that i discovered this is my passion i started talking to women i started my youtube channel about it and eventually i became a certified mindset coach that is who i am now i'm a certified mindset coach i am a practicing coach i also do public speaking and all that so i just want to tell you the things i'm talking about here are things no one will tell you about number one the most important part of healing is the awareness what happened to you and as a result of what happened to you now this is how you're showing up for example if you grew up with a dad who was absent even physically absent like you didn't grow up with a dad and as a result of that you have abandonment issues or your dad left your mom when you were 10 years or you know whatever situation there was and you have abandonment issues and that those abandonment issues left you clingy like you're too clingy you need to know that so the awareness of what happened to you and how you're showing up for me i was brought up in a background where my dad was very strict he was very tough and you could not sit there and argue with him about anything even about a spoon <laughs> we didn't have that window so i grew up uh not knowing how to communicate my emotions not to handle my emotions so if things go wrong the things used to go wrong in my relationships and i used to shut down i either do the silent treatment i either start yelling and crying i either block you it was extreme i had extreme reactions and that is one of the things i had to be aware of so when i say you need to be aware you need to be aware of how you, those the coping mechanisms you've developed, how they can sabotage your life, how they can sabotage your workplace, how they can sabotage your relationships. Because if you get angry and then every time you, you run to resign or you start calling your supervisor names, you're sabotaging yourself. So the awareness, even as you continue healing, and this is what I teach my clients, if you, as you continue healing, even if it's a breakup, if whatever it is you're trying to work on, knowing, by the way, I have this issue. Maybe you're, you're too clingy or you're hyper-independent. Yeah, like you can't, you're not able to get really close with someone because you have fear of being left. Or you have control issues where if you have a little disagreement in the relationship, you just automatically run to dumping that person as a way of assuring yourself you have control so you get to leave them, not the other way around but then you're sabotaging good things in your life. So know um, how you're showing up as a result of what happened to you. That will help you so much. So that sometimes when you find, like now I say, um, I, was, I, was, I was emotional. I'm still emotional and I'm also an empath. So sometimes you, I, you can find yourself in a situation where something makes you really, really mad and you wanna go back to that state of shouting, crying, banging the door or going silent. But then you have to catch yourself now that you are aware. That's the most important 
part about awareness. You catch yourself like, oh, Madoni, we're not doing that. We're not crying. We're not shouting. We're not blocking. We're not ghosting. We are having the hard conversations. Madoni, you can do this. That is what awareness that does. So as you heal, ask yourself, as, as a result of how, what happened to me, even in my childhood, or even in my day-to-day -day activities, what are some of the negative coping mechanisms? What are some of the behaviors I have that are making me sabotage good things in my life? You really need to be aware of the behaviors you've picked up that are not working for you. Such that when you find yourself in a situation where those behaviors that you don't want are showing up, where you want to start banging doors, calling people names, blocking people, you know, resigning for no reason, you'll be able to catch yourself. You'll be able to call yourself for a meeting and ask yourself, Mothoni, uh -uh. Is this how we are showing up? No. How do we want to show up? We want to be emotionally mature and be able to have the tough conversations. Yeah. You'll be able to catch yourself and check in with yourself. Now, another thing that you need to learn through healing. Some days are better than others, but there are still hard days. There are days where you feel you, you wake up and you wonder why is my life like this? Does my life has to be like this? Even as a coach, you know, as a coach, I'm also a human being. I also go through the emotions, emotions. Sometimes my business is doing well. Sometimes I'm not making enough money. Sometimes I have overbooked clients and I have taken too much work and I'm like, oh my God, you know. And sometimes even in my personal life, I also have family, I also have friends. I'm also married. You, I also have people in my life and sometimes relationships need work and need a lot. And sometimes you can find yourself asking those questions of really, is it worth it? Or yeah. So I'm a coach also and some days are harder than others. But at the end of when you go through the hard, maybe you're crying in the bathroom, you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to take a shower, you don't want to talk to anybody. Take that moment. Sometimes it's important to take those moments. But then after the, after the 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, get back to yourself and ask yourself, what kind of woman do I, do I want to be? How do I want to show up in my everyday life? How can I do better? How can I make sure what happened to me will not continue to happen to me? Yeah? Some days are harder than others, but it's okay. It's part of being a human being, yeah? And I say some of the things we're trying to heal from are things that have happened to us for a very long period of time. Are things that have happened to you over the years, like a whole 21 years of your life. So they won't just go away, disappear just because you're going for therapy or you're coming for coaching. You have to um, pull layers like an onion you have to pull layer after layer until you get to yeah that level another thing sometimes after going through the trauma sometimes we continue to re-traumatize ourselves there are things that happened to you uh maybe you some of you if you had like my dad was very unforgiving like you mess up like this he will sing about it for like a year yeah so, so so you realize because you had gotten used to such things even in your adult life you're doing the same things to yourself when you mess up you also very so it's also so hard for you to forgive yourself because you were taught you have to be perfect so you are continuing to re-traumatize yourself so i really say please observe yourself so you stop re-traumatizing yourself if your relationship with your dad gave you a lot of anxiety like you literally could not stand that man like you were happy the days he did not come home if you're one of those people and then you you're getting yourself into relationships where you're going through the same things where the man is ghosting you where maybe um, you're going through anxiety you're walking on eggshells then know you are the one who's re-traumatizing yourself so also catch that what are some of the things you went through that are unpleasant is it because you had parents who are not reliable you didn't feel safe at all you didn't feel secure you didn't have security but then even in your adulthood you're still continuing to date married men you're still putting yourself through the same anxiety through the same things that had have hurt you you went through childhood trauma you are traumatized maybe you had an alcoholic dad you know he would you would come home and shout at everybody and so you had to run away when he comes you had to live in fear you had to sleep uh, fearful and then in your adulthood you're still dating alcoholics you still got married to an alcoholic man. You see, you're the same person. You're the same one. You're the same person who's re-traumatizing yourself. You still, I say, we recreate our childhoods. We are doing a reincarnation of our childhood, even as adults. Now, another thing you need to know, the people that hurt you 
cannot be the same people that are healing you. You cannot get healing the same place you got hurt. And sometimes when I get, when we're working on the childhood trauma with someone, and then they tell me, my dad this, did this to me, should I tell him so he can apologize? And I say, you can go to tell him and he can, he can tell you worse things. And actually when you work on the trauma, you realize some of the reasons why you are traumatized as a child is because of unhealed trauma from the parent. Their parent, your parent went through their own trauma. They did not heal. They passed over the trauma to you. So when you start the healing journey, you realize you start sympathizing with them. You see them as broken little girls. Yeah. Little, little children or a little, a little boy. You start and you start looking at them and wondering as in do you imagine someone treating a child like that do you imagine can you imagine what's going on with them do you imagine how they feel about themselves yeah yes so sometimes i also get people tell me you know Mothoni, i need to go to that man i need to get closure i need to know why he did the, the things he did to me hmm. you want him to tell you over and over again why he doesn't want you you want him to tell you over and over again why he chose Naomi over you. You want him to tell you why he can do better than you. you. Why do you want to hurt yourself over and over again? I say the closure you need is that they cheated on you, that they didn't want anything to do with you, that they were not willing to give you the things you wanted. That's enough closure. You going through the heart of being cheated on or being dumped or ghosted, and then you still want to go to ask them so you can hear them hurting you again with their words or you cannot get healing the same place you got hurt. Ah, yeah. The last thing is introspection. You really need to do a lot of self-reflection. That's why I say spend time with yourself. If you can do nature walks, if you can read a book somewhere quiet, if you can sometimes I go for lunch alone. I love solo dates. I still date myself even as a married woman. And sometimes I go to somewhere where there's a park or somewhere there's open ground. I sit there. I have my food and while I'm looking at the trees when I'm thinking about anything i think about my life what do i want what are my goals what did my vision say about this year how am i showing up every day even as a mother even as a wife as a coach you know and even me as a person um because also sometimes when you have as women we are nurturers you have your husband you have your sisters you have everybody your friends and all that you also have to take care of yourself and you also have to look after you so please reflect reflect at how was I handling things in 2020? Do I still have the same problems I had in 2017? So what do I need to do to change that? Is it, be is it because I have bad spending habits or because I need to I have an income problem? Maybe I need to make more money. Am I dating the same men because of where I'm getting them? Or I have really not healed? Am I still desperate but I'm lying to myself that I'm not desperate? You have to do a lot of self-reflection. And if you went through trauma or if you're going through a period in your life where you don't really like your life, where you don't like yourself very much, where you have a lot of anxiety, you have unexplained reactions to some people, where you have uh, um, uh, episodes of sadness, you're angry and you, you're just angry and you don't know why, something little like this, you fire your nanny, you're quitting your job, you're calling your baby daddy names. You need to come to my boot camp. I have an upcoming boot camp, Healing the Inner Child. It's it's virtual and it's self-paced. So you don't get to miss out on anything. It's a program. It's It has trainings every day, like episodes every day. And we still get to do two live Zooms with me. Healing the Inner Child. Healing is beautiful. On the other end of healing is freedom. You know, when you go through trauma, you feel like you're still tied. Like you're still that girl who was called names. Even as an adult, you realize if you were busy pleasing your father, because most people please us, start out as parent pleasers. You realize as an adult, you continue to please people. Ideally, like it's like you still continue to please your father. But when you heal, you become free. Like you, you just create a different new narrative for yourself. You find the new you. You get to know you for you as compared to getting to know yourself from what you were told. You stop going with what you were told or who you were told you are and you discover who you are and you work towards becoming a better version of that person. So I'll leave the poster here so you can book your slots for the camp. And you can also get a hold of my book. I've written so much about healing the inner child. It's one of my, it's actually chapter two. You guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, it's chapter two, healing the inner child. 
even breakups and it's um let me say yo but this book is wonderful i get good feedback and i read it also by the way so funny anyway bye guys